What's up guys, Tim Little, welcome back to Tactical Bass. In today's video, we are talking spring bass fishing. Where did these bass go and the best ways to catch them? Spring bass fishing. If I had to vote, this would probably be my favorite time of the entire year to, uh, to bass fish, right? You got the, the warming trend in the weather, you got lake levels coming to full pool, you have fish more active, preparing for that spawn, you know, and these fish need to feed up. So you can have days where you can catch, you know, 50, 60, 70 plus fish in a single day. And you can also have days where you catch the biggest fish of your entire life. Springtime bass fishing for me is what it is all about. So today we're going to cover the different types of fisheries and, uh, and my favorite confidence baits this time of the year to help produce and have those magical days. Now, the first thing to understand, spring bass fishing, uh, the fish are on the move. It has everything to do with the weather, the moon, and the fish coming shallow to spawn. So right off the bat, if you are a shore-based angler, if you're a shore fisherman, the fish are coming to you. So this time of the year, those fish are coming to you, so they're easily accessible. A lot of times you can get to places where we can't necessarily get to in a, bag, uh, a big bass boat, but um, know that this is your time to shine as those fish are coming shallow. You know, they get behind lay downs, they get behind cover that we can't get to. You can pick them off walking the bank. So uh, hopefully you guys are as excited about spring as I am. You know, I did a video probably, I don't know, maybe a, a month or so ago, just talking about the early spring transition, you know, start thinking about what these fish are gonna do where they're going to go and how to catch them so today's video is all about that just kind of sped up about a month or so you know the spawn itself you know if you're down in say florida or south texas you know a lot of times the spawn can start as early as like december right so you guys are way past the spawn and and in that post spawn phase but for the most part that, sp that spawn time frame, that spring spawn time frame is from like, I'm going to say like March to beginning of a May-ish, I guess. You know, it's all relative. It all has to do with your water temps and your, your weather. You know, if you're up there in, you know, Michigan, Wisconsin, that, that upper end of uh, the country, you know, you could be May, June, right, for your spawn. But these fish, depending uh, on the type of fishery you're on or you're fishing, these fish are going to move uh, differently. So that's another thing to really understand what type of fishery are you on? Are you on a highland reservoir or a lowland reservoir or a river system or a natural lake or a pond? So we're going to kind of cover that, kind of we'll breeze over that because we, we, Matt and I, we do these seasonal videos uh, every year to kind of help um help you guys understand you know where these fish are going and how to catch them but more importantly understand the process of the movement of the spawn uh, another tip for you guys the spawn is going to happen in waves you know you get that first full moon those fish are going to move up some of them are going to move up uh, you know you get a warm weather trend or you get maybe a storm that kind of pushes that process back or at least slows it then you get another warming trend in a couple weeks you get a different moon phase another wave of fish are going to come up so i like to target the first wave of fish so this time of the year if i'm fishing um i'm typically uh, going to the backs of coves, the backs of spawning bays, the, spa the backs of, of creek arms. I'm starting in the back and then I will work my way out because I don't want to miss it, right? That first wave of fish, those big pre-spawn females, I want to be the first to present, you know, a big glide bait or a big swim bait or, and we're going to cover baits here in a little bit, but I want to be the first guy that's targeting those fresh fish coming up and uh, so I typically start to in the back, 
and then work my way out. Now, if that's a highland reservoir, it's gonna be different than a, than a natural lake. We're gonna talk about that here shortly, but you guys know that we like to do these seasonal videos, you know, spring, summer, fall, winter, just kind of help you guys work through that process. And like I said earlier in today's video, we already did that early spring stuff. Those fish are starting to think about it. They're coming out of their winter haunts. They're kind of starting to move shallow, but now it's 70 degrees, 80 degrees, 90 degrees, depending on where you're at. And these fish need to get that spawn done. So again, the fish move in waves and these fish are going shallow, okay? Now the fish also move typically in groups. So you'll have a wave of fish move up, they'll do their thing, and then the next group will move up. That first, that first group will move out, or some will stay shallow, and that's where they're gonna stay all summer, right? Some of those fish stay shallow, some go back out deep, and those are the fish that you catch out on ledges in the summertime. Um, but understand that these fish are moving, so you need to be moving as well. Sure, you can sit there and pick up a shaky head or a Senko and fish your favorite brush pile, and you might pick off a fish or two that are using that brush pile to get to where they're going. But if you want to have one of those magical days where you're finding those big schools of fish, you need to fish fast. You need to find those active, aggressive schools of bass. So again, that style of fishing is not for everybody, but if you really do want to have one of those magical days, and I'm not saying you can't have one on a shaky head or a, a drop shot or a, a Nico rig or a wacky rig, right? You might have your favorite brush pile that 50 pounds of bass are gonna use as they're heading to the back of a creek. And you might pick them off one by one or, or even if you just get one, you got your new double digit PB. But if you want to have those truly magical days where you catch a ton of fish, <laughs> and got a beaver right here swimming. I swear every time I'm doing a video, I don't know if you guys can see this or not. See right there. Got a beaver cruising. Uh, if you want to have one of those truly magical days where you find those those mega schools, uh, you got to fish fast and find those fish. One other tip that I like to tell people this time of the year, if you're we're gonna talk about the different styles of uh, fisheries here in just a second, but no matter where you are or the type of fishery you're on, if you're catching below average size fish or you're catching, you know, say you're on a, I don't know, say you're on a river system, right? Here on the TVA and it's it takes 15 to 20 pounds of, you know, best five fish. So a three pound average to win a tournament or a four pound average to win a tournament. And you're catching 10, 12, 14 inch fish. You're catching those bucks, those bucks, the males move up first. And those females, those big pre-spawn females are typically a point or a, a secondary point behind. And we're going to cover that stuff as well. So uh, those fish are going to be like a stepping stone as they move to those spawning bays, to those coves. But if you're catching below average size fish, backtrack a little bit to catch the big ones. Okay, so main lake point, I talked about that, talked about secondary points. Those of you guys that don't understand what those are, when you're on a highland reservoir, typically a highland reservoir is going to have a narrow dam, but a real tall dam. Typically, they are damming up some kind of river or canyon type dam right they're they're damming up a river and that gives you steep banks it gives you long river arms with lots of fingers lots of offshoots lots of points well those points that separate two major arms right in the middle that is your main lake point and then as you go past that main lake point and you have the little offshoot points those are the secondary points and then once you get past those, typically you'll have some kind of bay or some kind of backwater that is more flat, less contour, not as steep, and that's where those fish are going. So Highland Reservoir, typically deeper, typically colder, because uh, you got a lot of uh, you know water, a lot of current water movement in those river systems, and you have a lot more sheer walls. So if you find yourself in the back of a spawning bay you got good water clarity you got water good water temp you know high 50s low 60s and 
you go all the way to the back and you don't see anything. You don't see fish staging. You don't actively see fish spawning or beds. Back yourself out to the first break. So where that flat kind of pops up, right there on that edge, that deep water access is a lot of times that's where those fish are gonna hang. They'll wait for the right light, they'll wait for the right temperature or water temp, and then they'll pop up, boom, and go to the back and do their thing. Now, if you are on a highland reservoir and you back out onto that first lip and you don't find them, backtrack to the next secondary point you're ahead of them so back up a little bit and then keep backing up if you're until you find them again that's why i emphasize the moving baits because if you're sitting there shaking a a shaky head or a, a jig or a drop shot all day on the same spot or the same area you might never come across them but if you jump from this point to the next point to the next point and on the third or fourth point you start catching them now you kind of it kind of keys you in where they are in that process so we talked about a highland reservoir um, again head to head to those secondary points and then go to that first big cove or first area where it's less steep where these fish can pull up on a flat they can sun themselves they can kind of get ready for the spawn and do their thing again backtrack to that first deep water access to check for those bigger fish or to check for those staging fish. Lowland reservoir. Typically, you're gonna have a real long or wide dam. It's not necessarily as tall. You know, some of those dams could be a mile long or two, right? Or maybe multiple dams because you're 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 damming up a, uh, a not as steep of an area. Uh, a lot of those types of fisheries are gonna have a lot more offshore humps, uh, but less drastic contour lines you're not going to have those main or huge river arms you're not going to have the canyon type stuff where you have those bluffs or, or those walls but you will have creek channels that kind of head back to a bay or to a cove and that's what those fish are going to use just like a highway right they're going to use that that um, little deeper contour that little deeper depth water they're going to use that and they're still going to use those secondary points, but they're going to use that creek channel to move just like a highway. So if you can find where that creek channel comes in close to a secondary point just before a, a big spawning bay or a cove and it has good rock on it, that is awesome, right? Those fish are going to use that to go in. And they're also going to use it on their way out. After the spawn, you know, some of these fish are gonna stay shallow. Some are also gonna come back out and they're gonna use that just like they, they use that kind of step system in, they're gonna use that step system out, which is awesome because if you find them on the way in, now you have some waypoints, now you have some key areas that you can fish post-spawn, okay? River systems, basically, uh, you know, here on the Tennessee River, you have main river, lots of current, lots of generated current for power, and then you have little offshoots. You have big backwaters that kind of funnel out to the main river. As, as we get farther into spring, that water is going to start rising. You're going to get full pool, and those fish are going to be all the way in the back getting ready to do their thing. Right now, same process. They're gonna get out of the current, right? They don't wanna spend a lot of energy in the current. They're gonna get out of the current and then they're gonna start working their way back, these little arms to those bays, right? The warmer water, shallower water. Uh, if there's hard spots, maybe there's a shell bed, something like that inside a little cut, those fish are gonna use that as well. Um, natural lakes typically are, for the most part, fairly featureless. You know, you might have uh, some man-made structure. Maybe you have tires or fish, uh, fish habitats dumped, or uh, you, maybe there's uh, a lay down or a brush pile, something like that. Those fish are still going to work their way uh, into the shallows, but it's not going to be nearly as obvious the highway they're going to use. You know, sometimes if you have a low water year, uh, those waves will eat away the bank of the lake and then that water comes back up. Now you have a real subtle uh, break all around the rim of the lake. You know, 
maybe it's a foot or two foot or 18 inches, but those fish will, will use that to kind of swim around and, and get to the back. But um, if you find, as you're going in with your side imaging, if you find a little subtle break or a brush pile or who knows, I've found all sorts of stuff, sunken cars, boats, all sorts of stuff. Those fish are gonna use that hard cover to sit on, stage on, till they get back into the creeks and in backs of those bays. Now, if you are in a big bay that's kind of featureless, a lot of times they're gonna sit right in the middle. Typically the deepest area of that big bay, they're gonna stage there. Just like they would stage on that lip in the highland and lowland reservoirs, they're gonna stage in that deeper water. They're gonna kind of pop up and then do their spawn. So um, ponds, same thing. They're, they're, those fish are working their way from the deeper water, heading to the shallow. So it depends on how big your pond is. Hopefully you can fish it all in a day and uh, you can kind of work your way through that process. Are they in the deep water still down by the dam or are they up in the shallows in the grass towards where the water's coming into the pond? That's kind of your, your checklist, that's your, that's your process. What else? We talked about lowland, highland, natural lakes, river systems, and ponds. Now let's talk about my favorite ways to catch them. Um, you know, it's, it's, these beavers are mad that I'm here. They just <laughs> splashed right here. There's actually two of them now. Um, it's, again, these fish are aggressive. It's go time. You want to be covering water. You want to find these fish. And for me, it's really hard to beat an A rig, an Alabama rig. You know, these fish are feeding up, they're active. You can cover a ton of water. Now, a specific tip on the A rig, you know, a lot of guys like them, some guys don't like them. Guys complain about them being too heavy or they hurt their shoulder to throw because they can get really heavy. This time of the year, I have three one eight ounce heads. So an eighth, an eighth, an eighth. Those are four inch swammers. And then I have some Demiki armor shads on as my, my dummy baits. This is my go-to rig. You know, as these fish are going shallow, sometimes I find myself fishing in 18 inches of water. You know, I'm fishing shallow. I don't want this thing to get hung up. And throwing really, really light heads is easy on the shoulder. It's easy on the, on the elbow and it allows you to fish this in areas that a lot of guys don't fish an A-rig, right? It's a perfect way to mimic a school of bait fish. I have that paired up with this specific bait. That is the X-Zone Swammer. Kitex work great. A lot of good swim baits on the market, but that X-Zone Swammer has such a good body roll to it. It's got a real aggressive kick, that head kick. As you move forward, through the year you get into those warmer temps you want a more aggressive kicking uh, swim bait so blades or no blades totally up to you uh, i like to throw electric shad or bait fish colors if i am fishing a, a highland reservoir where i might have 10 or 12 15 foot of visibility i'm losing the blades i'm going straight a rig no blades if i find myself fishing in an area that might have got a a spring storm, it might have murked up the water, didn't make it muddy, but murked it up, I might throw a rig with blades. And again, this is our tactical, this is our mini underspin. It's not a full, our mini uh, A-rig. It's not a full-size A-rig. Again, those are four inch swammers, super universal and very easy to fish. All right, next up for me is going to be the glide bait. I don't know if it's getting dark, maybe the sun's going down behind that tree, but this is the S Waver 168. This glide bait has produced so many big fish for Matt and I, and a glide bait in the springtime, as these fish are moving up shallow, they're using pieces of cover to ambush from, you know, whether that's a lay down or a stump or whatever, right? If you can visibly see those pieces of cover and you throw a glide bait like this guy right here by them, as you're reeling, reel, 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 as you come up to that area where you think it is like the spot, the ambush spot, and you go twitch, twitch, 
you keep reeling so this thing's just swimming along like a stupid meal twitch twitch that directional change you can trigger those fish to bite with the glide bait uh unlike very few swim baits right if you're throwing just a straight paddle tail swim bait maybe it's a kai tech or whatever you can't really twitch or or get that thing to do a directional change but throwing the glide bait is a must for me in the spring now a lot of guys get kind of caught up on the whole glide bait deal but it's not that overwhelming guys you know here's a jerk bait typically you know we've saw we've said this for a long time i believe those glide bait eaters were or are the jerk bait eaters here's a jerk bait right not much smaller than the glide bait you can throw it on your favorite jig rod especially the 168 it's not overwhelming um, but you will get bigger bites throwing this presentation so if you're a guy that loves throwing jerk baits this time of the year throwing a glide bait can uh can improve the size of the fish uh, that you're targeting if you don't want to throw the glide bait okay but definitely throw some kind of jerk bait same type of fish are going to eat both of these so that's why i kind of have them in the same category this time of the year i'm throwing a very aggressive jerk bait again we talked about that warmer weather you're fishing faster uh, those fish are eating so i'm kind of putting down the the finesse uh, jerk baits like the the 110 the mega bass 110 the 110 junior plus one i'm picking up like the world minnow something that's throwing off a ton of flash right or the jackal re-range something that's fairly loud really aggressive you can get real aggressive with your with your cadence with your twitches but something that has a lot of flash a lot of body roll that throws a lot of sound and flash uh, a jerk bait works really really well so i have this time of the year i have one of these all of these tied on a version of them tied on at all times because you never know what the situation is going to present do they want the jerk bait do they want the glide bait do they want the a rig do they want the whatever right so i typically have all these baits readily accessible if not tied on this time of the year real quick about the glide bait uh, another guy a glide that works really really well that the bait sanity antidote again not a super large uh bait there's a jerk bait right it's not that small or not that big not much bigger than um the s waiver okay but those two guys right there you can get fairly active with your twitches um you know one thing that i do like to do on the glide baits that will help you from having that bait roll on your twitches don't hit it that hard and then secondly, put owner ST56 hooks on there. Those are 3X hooks. So it adds not only strength to the hook, you're not gonna bend them out on a big fish, but it adds weight to the belly of that bait and it allows you when you twitch, twitch, or real twitch, and that bait shoots side to side, it's not gonna blow out and roll, right? You want that thing still swimming fairly straight. So having the, the little extra heavy hooks on there really really helps with that and then if you need to you can get like those suspend dots or even bait sanity makes those tungsten tungsten uh strips that you can put under the belly to help get help keep the nose down and help keep this thing right when you add those twitches okay so the glide bait the jerk bait the a rig are my go-to's now i can't do a spring fishing video without talking about I'm gonna actually add these together. It's kind of a weird deal, but I'm gonna explain why. A square bill and a chatterbait. Matt and I, I just found myself in this situation just the other day, Matt and I were fishing and um, he's throwing a chatterbait, I'm throwing a square bill. He gets a couple bites, but they're short strikes, right? They don't, they don't eat it all the way. And I come behind him with the square bill and I could pause that bait in their face and they have to eat. Adding that, just like the glide bait, adding that, that cadence change, that directional change, you know, having that bait burn by and then pause right in their face, they have to eat it. And then they get a mouthful of, of treble hooks, right? So I like to have that one-two punch. So let's talk about the, the chatterbait first. I love 
the jackhammer, right? It's been around for several years. That thing is an amazing chatterbait. Uh, recently, Z-Man came out with their Evo Elite. They got some really cool colors, painted blades, electric shad color. They got bluegill colors. Uh, and then also the cross eyes. So I have those three different style of chatterbaits depending on what I'm fishing, okay? That cross eyes, you see that big uh, titanium wire guard? If I find myself in an area with a ton of flooded timber, wood, or lots of debris in the water, I tie on that cross eyes because that, that wire guard really helps that bait come through clean, deflects really well, and those fish still get it. And then I talked about the Evo, right? That Evo Elite, just some really cool color patterns uh, paired up with uh, heavier snap and painted blades. Those are really cool. And then obviously the Jackhammer. Those are my three go-to chatterbaits. As far as color, you saw me hold them up. Got one other for you. There's the Jackhammer. Real bright trailer, that Spunk Shad. I'm typically this time of the year, depending on water clarity, I'm going with either a bait fish color, so like an electric shad, a bluegill color, or a black and blue. If I'm in that real muddy stained water, that having that dark contrasty bait uh, really stands out. So I'm going black and blue. Again, uh, I'll link all this stuff down below in the video description. There's some really cool uh, spunk shads uh, colors from Hog Farmer, and then Missile Baits also has their custom colors they do and uh, have some favorites in that line as well. Uh, and then again, throwing that orange or red, if you, there's some fisheries that you just need to throw bright red. So that's the chatterbait. Again, it's a one-two punch. I can cover more water. I can cast farther with a half ounce chatterbait. I can, I can fish that point, that secondary point or that channel fairly quickly. Again, I'm moving, I'm trying to find those fish. I can fish a lot faster, a lot farther. Now, if I start finding myself getting those dunk and the nut, then dunk, dunk, nothing, or swinging and missing, that's when I'm gonna switch over to the square bill. Two of my favorites, this guy right here, that is the Bill Lewis ATV. Now, we've, we've talked about square bills in the spring for, I don't know, a decade or so. It's just one of our go-to deals, you know, the River Sea Biggie, we have some of our favorites, but as Matt's talked about in some of his recent crankbait seminar, seminars, there are some amazing baits that are newer to the market. That ATV has quickly become one of, if not my favorites. It's a fairly inexpensive uh, square bill, but this thing is a four wheel drive. You can throw it right into your lay downs. You can throw it right into that stump and that bill angle and that those EWG style hooks on it just come through 95% of the time. It's crazy how good that thing is. And then you guys have heard us talk about this guy right here, the Rocco. The Rocco is another, it's a silent bait, whereas that one's a, a more of a subtle kind of a rattle. But this is a really uh, quick starting square bill. Now what I mean by that and why that's important this time of those of the year where those fish are going shallow, I mean, sometimes they're, they're pushing bait super shallow. I mean, shallow enough, you can't even get your boat to and you're trying to cast as far as you can. But having a, a square bill that you can throw up there super shallow and burn, 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 pause, burn, 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 pause. And as soon as you're turning that, randle, the, that, that handle on that reel, that bait's, that bait's kicking, that bait's thumping, right? So whether it's a, whether it's a, a craw pattern or Got another one here for you. It's another cool color or a bait fish pattern. Totally up to you. I typically start with that, those red colors and then I'll go more of a shaddy if I'm, uh, or more of a bait fishy color if I have water clarity or I feel like that orange or that red is just too much. But that is a one, two punch. So the chatter bait, the square bill, I intertwine them depending on how the fish are acting and how they're eating. Some days, they're not eating the square bill, but they're choking the chatterbait. Just kind of is what it is, okay? Now, last but not least, a lipless. That's the TN70, okay? Again, you'll, you'll see a lot of 
similar colors. Those reds in the spring just work really well. But the TN70 is a bait that I can, typically this time of the year, I'm fishing a, a lipless with that hopping action. You know, hop it up just enough where you feel that bait vibrate five or six times, let it fall, let it fall, let it fall. Now, if you're on a fishery or you're in the very back of a, a bay where there's grass that's coming up, you might have to go with like a, a rattle trap. Let me grab one of those for you because I, I did not pull one of those. <laughs> Boat lipless. You know, something like this, right? Again, real bright red, real bright orange, uh, but a half ounce, half ounce trap versus a heavier, you know, TN uh, is gonna work differently in different scenarios. If you are up shallow in that grass, you're probably gonna get hung up with that three quarter ounce bait. Uh, whereas that trap, half ounce trap, is gonna be a larger size, but it's not as heavy. And you can burn that thing over the tops of the grass. Again, it's a kind of a one, two punch and it depends on the type of fishery you're in. Okay. With that said, going all the way back to the guy that wants to fish slow. You might have the best secondary point on the lake. Excuse me. You know the cove's right there. You got the secondary point right here. Nice chunk rock, right? You know those fish are going there and you want to pick them off as they come through. A shaky head. Uh, a, a power shot or a drop shot. And a Senko are basically my three finesse baits this time of the year. If I find myself in that situation, you know, a shaky head, do I even have one? Yeah, right here. Shaky head, that T Mac, this is actually the finesse worm, but that T Mac paired up on a shaky head, it's weedless, so you can fish it through those rocks, you can fish it through the brush pile. Uh, but I like to have some kind of flash in my worms this time of the year, whether it's electric shad or uh, this is tilapia magic. Look at this. You guys know how much we love the net bait, but look at the gold, the purple, the blue flake in that bait. Again, I'll link all this stuff down below the video description if you can't see that sunset behind the trees, but uh, that is an awesome. So here's the T-Mac and there's the finesse worm two different sizes. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. You probably can see fine. It just looks dark with my glasses on, but, but, uh, that guy right there, if you're a guy that's fishing shallow, you know, you're fishing around wood, that sort of stuff. Maybe you're, you're fishing docks. Okay. A weightless five inch Senko, either Texas wig or, or Texas rigged or wacky rigged is a killer as well. It's a very subtle presentation. It's a bait you can get into places, skip into places that you can't get other baits. It's, it's super subtle and big ones eat it. So some kind of electric shad, I'm throwing electric shad, I'm throwing green pumpkin, or I'm throwing like, the number is like 301, right? Like a green pumpkin, purple copper flake, something with a little bit of flash in it, okay? And then last tip for you guys, if you're throwing like the power shot or you're throwing a shaky head and you're not getting bit on like that tilapia color or some stuff with some, some flake in it, try throwing some kind of pink worm, okay? This is the missile baits, this is the magic worm. This is missile morning, really, really bright. You've heard of morning dawn, you know, those pink colors for whatever reason shine in the springtime. I remember back on Clear Lake, there was uh, three nine pounders caught in a tournament. Out of all the anglers, there were three nines caught and every single one of those big fish were caught on a pink worm. Go figure. It's just one of those things that just, is what it is. I love throwing like Margarita Mutilator or like PB and J, uh, you know, most of the year, but in the springtime, something about throwing, throwing that pink. And then again, having some kind of flake in that, uh, I don't know if it's just mimicking bluegill or bait fish or what, but having some kind of flake uh, helps really, really well. Guys, as always, uh, 
thank you for watching. We're, we're coming up on what, 40 minutes or so. You know, it's a, it's a great time to get out on the water. Enjoy the outdoors, enjoy the warmer weather, uh, the good water clarity and big bass. So if you haven't got ready, get your stuff ready. You, you don't need all these things, but get yourself a couple, right? Get yourself some options. As you find yourself in these dis different situations, you'll have the best bait for that situation. And, uh, and hopefully you feed off of our confidence. You know, we got years of catching fish on these specific baits, these specific colors. We have a ton of confidence in them. And hopefully that, uh, that floods out to you guys. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. You learned something from this video. If you did, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you guys on the next video.